We urge you, our newly elected Prime Minister, to do the right thing and add the statutory powers to the current toothless inquiry into Essex Mental Health Services, defibrillate the system here in Essex, then send the learning across our nation into every mental health establishment to make the same changes required. Signed by Melanie Leahy and multiple bereaved and failed families across this nation. No justice! No, no peace. peace! No justice! No, no peace. peace! I'd just like to say um, thank you for this opportunity to join and unite with the Family Friends campaign. What an amazing group of people you all are. Find a friend, every one of you here, tell them about their campaign. It's amazing and they will save lives. God bless you all. Thank you. The government commissioned an independent inquiry which is currently ongoing. The inquiry into deaths at Mental Health Trust in Essex was announced after 100 and 100,000, oh, was it 106,580 people signed a petition calling for an inquiry on a full statutory footing. The current inquiry has already uncovered at least 1,500 deaths, 900 within that figure of which we have been advised the inquiry team have little to no details about. 900 souls, do they not matter? And please bear in mind, this is a figure that the Trust have picked out of the air. It could be much more than that. The only way for real change to happen is by having a comprehensive investigation with the legal power to compel witnesses to attend and to give evidence un unknown. The only investigation that carries that legal power is a statutory public inquiry. Ms Dory's MP said she wanted the inquiry to be non-statutory so it is quicker. Again, we were being ignored. We have been fighting for years. Yes, we want answers as soon as possible, but we are not in a rush if it means we can have a thorough and comprehensive investigation, which is a statutory inquiry. Then we will wait for that. The choice of chair feels like a mockery. Dr. Strathdee may well be a person of integrity, but her background and extensive involvement with the NHS Mental Health Services make it impossible for her to be considered independent without bias. Changing the type of inquiry to a full statutory one is simple. You could choose to do so easily. Channel 4 dispatches, Are Our Wards Safe, recently aired. A retired police officer went undercover into Essex mental health wards and uncovered systemic abuse and multiple safety failings still ongoing. We will not stop until we get a statutory public inquiry. I hope I can say this name right. Dear Mr. Rishi Sunak, Welcome to your new position and the great opportunity you know, now have to lead our great country. You have many serious issues that require addressing and I write to request you address one of those right now, namely the mental health services. I am a bereaved mother who lost her only son, Matthew, to a failing mental health system. Matthew Leahy, age 20, was dead within seven days of entering a so-called place of safety. Since that day, I have been fighting, fighting for the truth, fighting to find out what happened to cost my son his life. Answers which will ultimately lead to accountability, justice, and importantly, real change. I am not alone in my fight. I am now joined by some 90 plus other families. We have made it clear from the outset to your predecessors that we want a statutory public inquiry into Essex Mental Health Services and we have set out why. Our solicitors have previously written to the government setting out in detail 
why it has to be a statutory inquiry and we were ignored. If government continues to ignore us, the families who have lost our loved ones because of the failures of people meant to be looking after them, then who exactly is our government? The answer just lost and that person is lost. A lot of families don't have the strength that I have, so they go away quietly. We need this. We need everyone joining together to help each other, to make everyone sit up and be strong. Because this is a battle. All these beautiful people did not deserve to die the way they did at the time they did. So today, um, I have written a letter on behalf of our families and I'd like to read it out to you. Pounds. The following year, they spent zero. That's how bad it is. And uh, anyway, the fine, what happens, the money just goes full circle, back into government purses, and back to the trusts again. So what was the point of all that? No one was held to account. And that's what we're all asking for, is holding people to account. Now I stand here today calling for a statutory public inquiry into Essex Mental Health Services. We are now 93 families and growing sadly because the children, elderly, middle-aged are all being fouled and are continuing to die needlessly. Black, white, it doesn't matter. Young, old, it doesn't matter. It's all of us now. It is touching all of us. It's like a cancer that is growing. <sighs> so, we know that this is happening across our nation and people say, why just Essex? It needs to be national. The thought for us is that it's too thin to go national. We are calling for Essex, we've been through Parliament, we've been to the Parliamentary Health Ombudsman. There's an independent inquiry ongoing. That's what they gave us in Parliament. It has no statutory powers. We cannot bring in staff under oath. We need them in. We need, that's the only way we're gonna see them in public, be answerable for why this has been allowed to continue. 1,500 deaths have been uncovered. 900 of those, 900 people, more than we have here today, they don't know how they died. Somebody died, they moved them out of the trust, they moved them to another hospital. They told me that he was incoherent and slurred in speech. My son was as coherent as I am today. The ligature was destroyed. It's been blue, it's been green, it's been white. It's been a bed sheet, a pillowcase, or a blanket. The police took no photographs, they took no forensics. On my complaining, they went back to the room two days later to take forensics. However, I soon learned a new patient had been moved into that room within an hour and a half of my son dying. So, my journey began in 2012. It would be 10 years this November since Matthew passed. I've been fighting to find out the truth of what happened to my son. I started a petition to call for a public inquiry into his death. I got 106,000 people to sign it and we gained a debate in Parliament. We waited a year for that debate. The government then tell me they do not do public inquiries into one death. And we know full well they do because they did one into the death of Rocky Bennett, who's been mentioned here today. So I thought, maybe I'll find more families. I found seven with similar deaths to mine and that information we took to the health and safety executive. And I can tell you, a four and a half battle with them, the trust was fined 1.5 million pounds for not removing ligature points, known ligature points that they had been warned of years earlier. In fact, the year before my son's death, they had a 100,000 pound budget to remove. Never saw my son alive again, because on that seventh day, he was dead. Day four, he had called home to his father. 
and said that he had been drugged and raped on the ward. I instantly called the ward and asked, what's happening, where's Matthew? And was told, Matthew's fine, he's in art class. Come in on Friday and see him. He's just a bit delusional. What I didn't know until after he had died, that he had called the police on our advice. By the time police arrived, Matthew was incoherent. He'd been deemed to have no mental capacity. The police took no swabs, no clothing. In fact, did nothing for my son. And he was found hanging in his room. After he died, it came to light that he was meant to have had a care plan. There was no care plan. Staff falsified his care plan and slipped it in his notes. It took me four and a half years for the police to finally agree to prosecute. However, no, all they did was they wrote down there was a crime and then refused to prosecute because they said it was not in the public interest. Matthew at post-mortem was found with needle wounds in his groin, to this day unexplained. GHB in his blood and urine, he had bruises above both ankles and wounds conducive to rape. However, his voice went unheard. It took me seven and a half years until finally I received the 9-9 call that my son had made to the police that day. Look at you guys. What an amazing tribute to everyone that's passed at the care of the state, under the care of the state. Look at how many of you are and fill this road with the spirit of all those that have passed. Because we're not alone today. The sun's been shining and the heavens have been singing for us. I felt the emotion listening to all the families talk before me and I felt their passion. And we are fighting to keep loved ones, the next generation, alive and safe when they are asking for care. My son, Matthew, was 20 years old when he went into mental health crisis. He, like one of the lads was spoken about earlier, he ran away in fear. An ambulance didn't come. The police came. Three hours, he made them wait until he was threatened with a taser. Three times, he was threatened with that taser until he was wrestled to the ground. He was handcuffed and he was put in the police car and taken to the Linden Centre. The Linden Centre is a psychiatric hospital in Essex run by the Essex Partnership University Trust. I thought, my son's gonna be safe. I've been trying for a year to get him the help that he needed. Five mental health assessments. When he finally went into that place of safety, I rested. I was told, wait a week, allow him to settle on the ward 